بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على من بعث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending peace and salutations upon his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then to proceed firstly I want to thank Peterborough Dawa for kindly inviting me down and giving me this opportunity to come and visit you brothers and sisters to discuss the most important day of our lives the most important day that we will ever face as we go through this life and we become absorbed by it and we become absorbed by our day-to-day -day routines and our wants and our wishes and our hopes and our desires and our plans for the future every single one of us is moving through this life and this life is the first stage and then the second stage which you heard about was described by our brother Abu Sumayya which is the life of the Barzakh and the life of the grave and this third and final stage that every single one of us is going to go through is in many ways the most important because if we can get through this day safely then insha'Allah we will have achieved safety for all of eternity by the permission of Allah. And so what I want to do with you today is go through some of the ayat, some of the verses from the Quran and some of the ahadith from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where this day is mentioned. And I want to emphasize that I won't be able to cover everything about Yawm Al Qiyamah. In fact, were we to have one lesson where we spoke about the names that Allah has given to the Day of Judgment, it probably wouldn't be enough because Allah calls it by so many different names. Because every single name describes the day from a slightly different perspective. So it's known as Yawm Al Hisab, the day of Hisab, of giving accountability, the day of reckoning. Yawm al Qiyamah, the day of standing when the people will stand. And there are so many different names. But the first thing, my brothers and sisters, that we have to come to terms with is that this world is going to come to an end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ نَفْخَةٌ wahida." That when the trumpet is blown, the first time وَحُمِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالُ فَدُكَّتَ دَكَّةً وَاحِدًا And the earth and the mountains, they're going to be removed from their places and they're going to be crushed with a single crushing. فَيَوْمَ إِذٍ وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقِعَةِ On that day, the great event is going to take place. This world that we have with its mountains and with its beauty is going to come to an end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also mentions إِذَا السَّمَاءُ فطرت, When the heavens, when the heavens are ripped and cleft and opened. وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ تَثَرَتْ When the stars in the sky, they fall from their places and they scatter. وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ When the sea, it bursts forward. وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ بُعْثِرَتْ When the graves, they are turned upside down. In other words, what was in them is now above them. There are so many detailed descriptions. إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ سُيِّرَتْ 
وإذا العشار عطلت وإذا الوحوش حشرت وإذا البحار سجرت Allah says when the sun is wound up it's no longer going to produce its light when the stars are going to fall when the mountains are going to pass away when the pregnant animals are going to be they're just going to be abandoned when the wild beasts they're going to be gathered together when the sea will turn into fire and it will overflow when the souls will be rejoined with their bodies that time when the when the dead will be brought back to life this is that day my brothers allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us about that day and the reason why we have so many detailed descriptions is that so me and you we can prepare for that day allah jalla wa ala he didn't just mention it in one place countless places so that me and you can picture ourselves on the plane of judgment the plane of resurrection the plane of standing the plane of repayment so that we can fix our affairs in this life that's the point here it's not just to learn about the day of judgment and then go about our day-to-day -day lives and forget everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbakum this is for every single one of us O mankind fear your lord be dutiful to your lord inna zalzalata sa'ati shay'un 'azim because the earthquake of the hour is a terrible thing it's a great thing on that day when you're going to see that take place Allah says on that day when that's going to take place you're going to see that every nursing mother that mother who is so loving and so caring to that child Allah says on that day when that happens, that nursing mother is going to forget about her child. And every pregnant one is going to drop her load. Her pregnant one, that womb which is a place of safety and sanctuary and security for that child, Allah says when it occurs, the terror of what happens is going to cause her to abort that pregnancy. Allah says, are you going to see the people wandering around as if they're in a drunken state? Allah says, but they're not actually drunk. But the punishment of Allah is severe. The scenes that they witness are so unbelievably serious. The scenes that we see are going to be so unspeakably great. That the people are going to lose their minds. The way alcohol causes a person to lose his mind, Allah says the people are going to be wandering around in that state on that day. The people will lose their minds. This trumpet, it's a horn as the Prophet wasallam he called it. It's going to be blown twice. The first blowing, that angel when he is commanded by Allah, the angel Israfil, when he's commanded, he will blow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ And that trumpet, that horn is going to be blown. فَصَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ Everybody who is in the heavens and in the earth is going to die, except whoever wills. ثُمَّ نُفِخَ فِيهِ أُخْرَى فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنْظُرُونَ then it's going to be blown a second time and behold, they are standing, looking. Allah Jalla wa ala, He tells us, with that first blowing of that trumpet, that signals now the destruction of the heavens and the earth. Everything wiped away, clean slate. The earth is wiped, clean slate. And then when it's blown again, behold, the first of the people till the last of the people, they're standing, looking 
on. Ikhwani fillah, the earth is not going to be the way we see it. The earth is going to be completely leveled. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and remember when we're going to cause the mountains to pass away and you're going to see the earth as a leveled plain. وَحَشَرْنَاهُمْ And we're going to gather them all together. فَلَمْ نُغَادِرْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدًا And we're not going to leave even a single one of them behind. The first of the people, Adam, he will meet the last of his children. And the last of the people will meet their father, Adam, alayhi salatu wassalam. Allah Jalla wa Ala, he says, يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ on that day, the earth is going to be changed for another earth and the heavens as well. وَبَرَزُوا لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَّارِ And on that day, all of the creatures are going to appear before Allah, the one, the irresistible. My brothers, the Prophet ﷺ, he told us that when that trumpet is blown for the first time and everybody dies, there's going to be a period which is of 40. And we don't know, is it 40 years, 40 days? We don't know. Then he said, Allah is going to send a rain. And it's going to rain upon the earth. And the people, they will regrow the way the plants and the vegetation regrows. That's how we're going to regrow. That's how the people are going to come out and they're going to grow inside of the earth the way the vegetation, it grows. And my brothers, every single one of us, regardless of his wealth, regardless of the beauty of his clothes and his garments, regardless of his stature in this life, he is going to be resurrected on Yawm Al-Qiyamah barefoot, naked and uncircumcised, the way we were created when we came into this life. When the Prophet ﷺ heard this, or he said this, his wife Aisha radiallahu anha, because she was a woman of great modesty. She was a woman of great modesty. She understood nakedness is bad. She understands the woman and the men they should be covered. They have an aura that should be covered. She said, Oh Messenger of Allah, the men and the women are going to be resurrected together, looking at each other. That was her understanding. That nakedness is not something good. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Oh Aish, the affair is much more serious than that. In other words, they're not going to be looked, that's the least of your concerns on that day. That's the least of your concerns on that day. And so my brothers, this life, when the number of dead is complete and the heavens and the earth have become empty and devoid of inhabitants and they become still after they have been in motion, there will be nothing to be heard and no one to be seen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will remain as He has always been, eternal, the one, Unique in his might and in his majesty. And then, my brother, your soul will be startled by the cry of the caller, calling all of creation as well as you to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with complete humility and submission. My brother, imagine how this call is going to sound to you. Imagine what effect this call is going to have when you realize that you are going to have to stand in front of Allah. So your heart, it will sink down into your chest and your hair, it will turn grey because we now have to answer to the owner of might and majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whilst you are filled with terror, you will hear the earth opening up above your head. And so you leap up from your grave, covered with dust from head to toe, standing now on your grave. And you are staring into the direction that this call is coming from. And all of the created beings, they have gotten up the same way 
that you did. And they are all covered in the dust of the earth. And all of them are full of terror. And they all start moving together towards the direction of this call. My brother, imagine yourself now. You're naked. You're humiliated. You are full of fear. You're full of grief. You're full of distress. And you're in a crowd of people who are exactly like you. And all of you are silent and you're not even speaking. Imagine how lonely that day is. You're with all of mankind and yet you're all alone. You are all alone with your thoughts and your fears and your grief and your anxiety. And so you're all walking silently towards that caller. And you gather in an open plain, all of the people and all of the jinn as well, naked and barefoot. And all of the kings of this earth, they have no more power, they have no more sovereignty, they have no more control. They're humbled and they're humiliated. And then the animals are going to be brought into that plain of gathering as well from the fields and the mountain tops. And they're hanging their heads in awe of Allah, in obedience to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. After having been vicious and proud, the beasts of this earth, they are walking full of submissiveness and full of humility. And then it dawns on you. This is the situation of the animals who've done no wrong. This is the situation of the animals who didn't have free will to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet look at their situation. Imagine, my brother, then, your situation on that day. And then the shayateen, the devils, they're going to come after having been so stubborn and rebellious. And they're going to be fearing the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has gathered all of these creatures in that one place. And they have no say in the matter. And so my brothers, when the inhabitants of the earth has been completed, the jinn and the humans and the animals, when all of them have gathered, the earth, the sky above them is going to begin to twist and crack and it's going to be turned into molten, into a molten iron, molten liquid metal. And it's going to be red and the gates above you, they begin to open up now. And you see a creation that you have never ever seen and that is the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as they come down you see the stars and everything falling from its place. And then my brothers, those angels, they come down with their huge size and their great stature and their amazing creation. And then the people will ask, is your Lord amongst you? And the angels will be terrified at that question. And they will say, glory be to him. He is not amongst us. However, he is coming. And then those angels, they surround those created beings. Those angels, they surround the inhabitants of the earth. And so they cover themselves with their wings out of humility and submission. And Heaven after heaven after heaven, all seven heavens, the angels, they come down. And when the affair is like that, Allah causes the sun to come just a mile over the heads of the people. And so there is nowhere to run, there is nowhere to hide. And the people are sweating according to their situation. So some, they are sweating and it's just up to their ankles and some are up to their knees and some are drowning even in their own sweat. And my brothers, there is nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. My brothers, we are going to be amongst these groups of people 
on that day. And the people, they will experience a thirst and a hunger which is unbearable and unspeakable. Their stomachs will burn out of hunger and thirst. And then they will speak to one another. But there is nothing that they can say in reality. And this is the affair of just waiting, of just the resurrection and going to the plains of resurrection on that day. And my brothers, this is, as we've said, the first of the people and the last of the people are going to come all alone. Allah says, لَقَدْ أَحْصَاهُمْ وَعِدَّهُمْ Allah, He knows every one of them and He's counted them with a full counting. وَكُلُّهُمْ آتِيهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَرْدًا And every single one of them is going to come to Him on the Day of Resurrection alone. The king will not have his army. The gangster will not have his friends. The man who is big and he feels haughty, he will be humbled in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers, this is a day where even the sinless children, look at your children, they have no sin upon them because they're not even accountable. They haven't reached the age of accountability. This is a day when the child, he will turn grey-headed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَكَيْفَ تَتَّقُونَ إِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ يَوْمًا يَجْعَلُ الْوِلْدَانَ shiba. How can you avoid the punishment if you disbelieve on a day that will make the children grey-headed? Why is our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us about this? He's saying to us, O oh my slave, fix your affairs before that day. O oh my slave, turn back to me before you reach that day. O oh my slave, prepare for that day. O oh my slave, ask yourself, what am I sending forward on that day? And this is why we are all about thinking and pondering over Yawm al Qiyamah. My brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, don't think that the zalimun, don't think that Allah is unaware of what they do. Rather, Allah is giving them respite. Allah is giving them a chance. Allah is letting them carry on doing what they're doing until a day when the eyes are going to stare in horror. Allah says, racing ahead, their heads raised up, they're running forward and their eyesight is not returning back to them and their hearts are void. They're empty. People are so scared. I don't, you know, you, we talk about the rabbit in the headlights. That rabbit is so full of terror at that moment, it doesn't, it can't move. And it's just looking at you. Allah Jalla wa Ala, He describes the people on that day, their hearts are void, their eyes are just a glazed over look, and they, they just, they're just blind and they're just deaf and they're dumb and they're drunk because of the terror of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. My brothers, blood ties on that day, your brother, your mother, these things, Allah, Allah says you're not even going to question these things. Allah says, فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ So when that trumpet, that horn is blown, فَلَا أَنْسَابَ بَيْنَهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ وَلَا يَتَسَاءَلُونَ Allah says, on that day when that trumpet's blown, there is no kinship, there's no family ties amongst them on that day, nor are they even going to ask about one another. Your mother, your father, your brothers, your friends, Allah says, you're not even going to think about them on that day. You're not even going to ask about them on that day. And look at the irony of it, subhanAllah. Some of us, we feel strong and powerful and protected because of our family. Yet on that day, all of our family is going to be with us and yet we're completely alone. It's a lonely day. Allah says, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ On the day that a man is going to run from his own brother. وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ And he's going to run from his mother and his father. Those people that he sought refuge and he sought comfort and safety with his mother and his father, he's going to run from them. 
وصاحبته وبنيه. And he's going to run from his wife, so beloved to him, and his children. He die for them in the life of this world, but he's going to run from them يوم القيامة. لكل مري منهم يوم إذن شأن يغني. Every man on that day, he's going to have enough to make him careless of others. He doesn't care about anyone else on that day except for himself. My brother, as I am going through these details, every single one of us should be putting ourselves on that day. Imagining ourselves and saying, you know what? What have I prepared for that day? Because clearly my mother and my father, my brother, my sister, my wife, my kids, my friends, nobody's going to be able to help me on that day. I'm going to be completely and utterly alone. If I have friends and I love my friends so much and my friends are all I'm about, they, no one's going to care about me on that day. Every single one of them, as they say, is it's every man for himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ لِكُلِّ نَفْسٍ ظَلَمَتْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ لَفْتَدَتْ بِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and if every person who had wronged himself, he possessed all the possessions of the earth, he would seek to ransom himself thereby. Think about that. This world which we are chasing so blindly and we love so much and we do so much disobedience to Allah for it, Allah says if every single person who wronged himself, if he had the world and everything in it, he would give it up in an instant to save himself from the fire of hell. My brothers, this is serious. The day of judgment is serious. The day of judgment, it's only to the fire of hell or to the paradise. There's no third location. My brothers, what are we going to do on that day? Allah says, and hellfire is going to be brought forth on that day. Imagine standing there and you hear roaring and you hear torment and you feel heat, the like of which you've never, it's, it's an experience that you can only speak about. And you look up and you see those massive angels. You see 70,000 ropes. And on each rope there is 70,000 angels and they're pulling something and they're pulling it and when they drag it into place you realize that is the fire of hell. The fire of hell is going to be dragged into place on the day of judgment. And so we've been resurrected. We are walking to the plains of gathering and we've spoken about what's going to occur to the everything there. Then the people, once they are standing and they've been standing for such a long time, they're going to go to the hawd, the cistern, the drinking fountain of the Prophet ﷺ. Imagine we've spoken about this thirst and this hunger. Imagine you know now that there is a fountain there which you can go and you can drink from. And it is a fountain which is fed by the rivers of Jannah. And by it stands the Prophet ﷺ. Only those people can drink from that fountain who followed the Prophet ﷺ. Think about that. And anybody who innovated and they went against his guidance and they turned away, they will be prevented from drinking from the fountain of the Prophet ﷺ. And so they've drank. But the, that's only a few people. And then they will go back to standing on a day the length of which is 50,000 years and they can't bear it anymore. So brothers and sisters, note that all, at this point Allah Jalla wa ala hasn't even begun the judgment. The judgment hasn't even begun and the people are in such a terrified, desperate state. So they say, we need somebody who can intercede with Allah on our behalf. They say, who is the best person who we can go to? They say, you know what? Go to Adam. Because he's the one 
that was the father of mankind. He's the first one Allah created and Allah created him with his own two hands. He's our father. So the people, they're desperate now, but they're full of hope as well. So they run to Adam alayhi salam and they say, Oh Adam, you are the father of mankind. Allah created you with his own two hands. Go and intercede for us. Go and intercede on behalf of your children with Allah. Go and intercede so that he may start the judgment. That's all they want. I, all I know is that I'm in such a state, I can't stand here. I need to know, am I going to go to paradise or am I going to go to... I can't stand here not knowing I'm desperate. The anxiety, the stress, the worry, the grief is killing me. I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I can't take this. Adam, look what Adam says. He says Allah is angry on this day. And he has never been this angry, nor will he be this angry again. And then Adam, he says... Nafsi, nafsi. He says, myself, myself. My brother, this is our father Adam. This is the father of mankind. And he is there so scared of Allah and so fearful of Allah. He says, no, I'm only worried about myself, myself. I don't, I, I'm sorry, I'm not, you're my kids, but I'm not interested. How then will be our situation? That's what I've got to ask you. That's why Allah says, fear your Lord and keep your duty to Him. The day of judgment is a terrible thing. Adam, who understands better than we do, he says, no, myself, myself. Adam says, go to Nuh, because he's the first messenger. And he's the one that Allah saved on the ark, on the ship. So the people now, their anxiety level is... Reaching next, next levels now. They run to Nuh because Adam can't help them. They say, oh Nuh, you're the first messenger. Allah saved you in the ship as well as those who were with you. Go and intercede with Allah on our behalf that he may start the judgment. Nuh says the same thing. Allah is angry on this day. Think about it, my brothers. Allah is angry on this day. He has never been this angry. Think about the days that Allah destroyed the disbelievers. Think about the days that Allah sent His punishments upon this earth. Think about the days when Allah destroyed His enemies. He was angry, but every prophet is saying He has never been this angry before. Nor will He ever be this angry ever again. Nuh says the same thing. He says, myself, myself. He was, a, he was alive and he was calling people for 950 years. He called them to the worship of Allah. Yet on the Day of Judgment, he doesn't want to know us. He says, go to Ibrahim. Because Ibrahim, he is the Khalil of Allah. He's the close friend of Allah. And Allah called him an Ummah. He's a nation in and of himself, Ibrahim. So they go to Ibrahim. After Nuh and Adam can't help them. So they go to Ibrahim and say the same thing. Ask Allah to start the judgment. He says the same thing. This is Ibrahim who Allah says that he was kind and he was gentle and he was loving to the people, to the believers. Yet on that day, he's not interested. Ibrahim says go to Musa because he's the one who Allah spoke to directly without any intermediary. The people go running to Musa. Musa is that strong character, alayhi salatu wasalam. The people come running to him. He says, no, Allah is angry on this day. He has never been this angry, nor will he be this angry ever, ever again. Myself, myself. He says, go to Isa. Look how every single one of the great, greatest prophets is too scared to go and stand in front of Allah. He's too scared to go and speak to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about me and you then, subhanallah? We sit here and say, only God can judge me. And yet those very prophets are afraid of just that, that God is going to judge me. And I'm not interested in anything else. Myself, myself. So the people run to Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam. 
and he says, no, this is not for me. Isa says, go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Literally now, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the last hope for mankind. He is the final hope for humanity. There's nobody left. So they go to him and he is the final chance. And then they say, go and intercede with your Lord that he may start the judgment. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he says, yes, this is for me. This is for me. So he goes in front of the throne of Allah and he prostrates and he praises Allah and he worships him with words that nobody has ever worshipped Allah with before or after. Allah will teach him words at that moment that Allah has never taught to anybody else. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he will hear the voice, O oh Muhammad, raise your head. Ask and you will be given. Intercede, your intercession will be accepted. And then the Prophet ﷺ will intercede for the judgment to begin. Think about how difficult of a situation we are going through and we haven't even found out whether we're going to paradise or hellfire yet. And then, my brothers, the judgment, it begins. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَهُ As Allah says, so whoever he does, even an atom's worth, the tiniest amount of good, he's going to see it. And whoever does even the tiniest amount of evil, he's going to see it. It's at that point. وَيَوْمَ يَعَدُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا يَا وَيْلَتَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أَتَّخِذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا It's at this time when a man realizes now the judgment's coming. He's going to bite onto his own hands, literally bite onto his own hands out of regret. And he's going to say, ah, I wish I would have taken the path of the messenger. And then he's going to say, woe to me. I wish I didn't take such and such a person as a friend. It's at that time that the person is full of regret. Why did I take that loser as my friend? Why did I take that person, that evildoer as a friend? Because he says he has misguided me after the guidance came to me. Think about that, my brother. Look at who your friends are. Because if they are bad people, you're going to ultimately end up hating them and you're going to be the loser. And the Prophet wasallam he said, there is none from amongst you except that his Lord will speak to him in the hereafter without a translator between them, nor a veil to separate him. Me and you, every single one of us, Allah is going to talk to us directly. Directly, my brother, what have we prepared for that day? But our Lord is a sitir subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who screams and He veils. The Prophet وسلم, he said, Allah will bring a believer near to Him. Because don't forget, my brothers, this judgment is happening in front of all of mankind. This judgment is happening in front of all of the creation. So when Allah asks you about the sin, this sin and that sin and this sin and that sin, everybody can witness it. So when you pretended to be so pious, when we pretended to be so pious in front of the people, yet when we were in seclusion, we did X and Y and Z, we're going to be exposed Yawm Al-Qiyamah in front of the people as a fraud. So... Allah will bring a believer near to him on that day. And Allah will shelter him with a screen. And then Allah will say to that believer, did you commit such and such sins? He will say, yes, my Lord, I did. And Allah will keep asking him, did you commit such and such and such and such and such and such? Allah will detail every single sin that that man did until the man will think, I'm ruined. Allah's questioning me about every single sin that I did. I am finished. 
But remember there's a veil between him And the rest of the people So the people on that day can't see it And look at the mercy of our Lord He says I screened your sins in the life of the world And I forgive them for you today So Allah will take some people who he has mercy on And Allah won't expose them Because Allah screened the sin in the life of the world We commit sins and Allah doesn't expose us And yet Allah can expose us We commit sins and yet our Lord He shields them and He He screens them for us So Allah will say to that person I screen them for you for the, in the life of the world And I will forgive you for them today After this reckoning my people, my brothers The deeds of the people will fly The deeds, the scroll that, So right now me and you are sat here in this life If we do good deeds It's written in our scroll of good deeds And if we do bad deeds Then it's written in that scroll of deeds it's written everything, everything we say and everything we do and everything we look at and everything we listen to and the places we go and the things that we engage in is all being written down. The book is being written. We are the author of our own book. And we're going to read our own book that we authored, Yawm al Qiyamah. Allah Jalla wa Ala, He says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ so the, so the deeds will fall And Allah will cause the people to either take them in their right hands Or take them in their left hands behind their backs Allah says So the one who takes his deeds in his right hand He's going to say Ah look And he's going to run to people He's going to say look take a look Read my book Read my book he says, I truly believed that I was going to reach and see my hisab. I was going to see my judgment. He says, I was sure of this day, meaning I prepared for this day. So Allah says he's going to be in a life which is pleasing in a lofty paradise. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ But as for the one who takes his book of deeds in his left hand فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَ He's going to say, Ah, woe to me, I wish I didn't receive this record. وَلَمْ أَدْرِي مَا حِسَابِيَ And I wish I didn't know what my reckoning was. يَا لَيْتَهَا كَانَتِ الْقَاضِيَ Ah, I wish that death was the ending of me. My money has not benefited me. My power, my ability to defend myself has left me. Allah says, Seize him. Allah gives the command at this time. Seize him and fetter him, chain him up. Then throw him into the fire of hell. So when that command is given, those angels who are surrounding the creation, they will swoop down and they will seize those people and they will take them and they will chain them and they will drag them on their faces and they will throw them into the fire of hell. And then my brothers, there are some people still remaining and there's going to be a further reckoning, further reckoning. A man, he's going to come and say, Oh Allah, I deny that I did those sins. Oh Allah, look at these liars. I deny that I did those sins. Allah will say, Is it sufficient for you that we will bring witnesses against you? The man says he thinks he's clever. He's argumentative with Allah. He plays games with Allah. He plans. He says, you know what? I'll commit this sin and I'll, I'll, I'll make tawbah afterwards. He, he plays a game with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Oh Allah, I will not accept any witness except for myself. I won't accept your angels who wrote down the sins. I won't accept any witness against myself on this day except for my own self. Allah jalla wa ala, he says, 
حتى إذا ما جاءوها شهد عليهم سمعهم وأبصارهم وجلودهم بما كانوا يعملون. Allah says till when they reach it, their eyes and their ears, their hearing and their sight and their skin will testify against them about what they used to do. Allah will cause his argumentative mouth to go mute and then his skin will speak. And his eyes will speak, and his hearing will speak about what he used to do. وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا And the man he will say to his own skin, Why are you testifying against me? Don't you realize if you testify against me, and I go to the fire of hell, don't you realize you're going to come with me? قَالُوا أَنْطَقَنَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي أَنْطَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ The skins will say and they will speak. Allah has caused us to speak the way He causes all things to speak. My brothers, then the balance of deeds will be set up to further establish the justice. The balance of deeds and the good deeds will be weighed on one side and the bad deeds will be weighed on the other. And then, my brothers, the people will be separated out into their groups. And they will follow their prophets. So the people who, who were the people of Musa alayhi salam, they will go and they will be questioned about what they did in response to the message of Musa. Those at the time of Nuh and Ibrahim and Isa and other than that, all of them will be separated out. And the wrongdoers as well, they will be separated out into groups. And then, my brothers, the darkness will prevail. There is a darkness which will overtake Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And those people who are disbelievers, they will be separated out and they will be driven to the hellfire in groups. And they them, the Munafiqeen. You have the hypocrites. The Munafiqeen are those, my brothers, who Outwardly, they profess Islam and inwardly, they hide disbelief. So they claim to be Muslims, but in reality, they are disbelievers. So the, real, the, the, the open disbelievers, they've all gone to the fire of hell and their wealth and their nothing will benefit them. And before they go to the hell fire, Allah will ask them, if you had the world and everything in it, would you give it now to save yourself from the fire of hell? Allah will ask, Allah will ask the disbeliever who turned away, if you had the world and everything in it, would you give it now to save yourself from the fire of hell? The disbeliever, he would, without even thinking, he will say, yes, I would save, give it now. Allah says to him, I used to ask you for much less than that. All I asked when you were in the life of the world was that you worship me alone. All I asked when you were in the life of the world was that you pray five times a day. All I asked when you were in the life of the world was that you wear the hijab and you guard your modesty and your chastity. All I asked when you were in the life of the world was that you live in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is in your best interest anyway and it gives you peace and tranquility that the non-Muslim he will never experience ever no matter what level of wealth and power and fame and recognition he has ever Allah says I used to ask you for much less than that Allah will take the man who enjoyed the most amount of good and the most amount of possessions and enjoyment in the life of this world and Allah will cause him to be dipped into the fire of hell once and then he will be removed. And then Allah will ask that man, did you ever experience any goodness in the life of the world? The man, he will say, by your might and your honor, I never experienced even a moment of goodness in the life of the world. Just one moment in the hellfire makes you forget about an entire life of riches and power and wealth and enjoyment. So they've all gone now into the fire of hell. We have the believers and with them they are the hypocrites. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause complete 
darkness now. And there is now a bridge known as the Sirat. This bridge, it passes over the fire of hell. And you cannot get to paradise except by going over this bridge. And don't forget the hellfire is burning underneath. But Allah has caused complete darkness. And the health uh, and this bridge, as the Prophet sallallahu described it, he said it is finer than a hair, thinner than a hair, and sharper than a sword. So it's a seriously difficult situation, and it's completely dark. Allah says, "Yawma tara al-mu'minina wal-mu'minati yasaa nuruhum bina aydihim wa bi aymanihim bushraakum al-yawm." Allah says. On the day that you will see the believing men and the believing women, their light running forward from in front of them and by their right hands, glad tidings for you this day. Allah Jalla wa ala will cause a light to project in front of every believer in line with the strength of his iman and his actions. Because it's pitch black now. So the only way that you can see where you're going is by that light which is projected in front of you in accordance with your actions and your iman. And then Allah says, يَوْمَ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتُ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا انظُرُونَ نَقْتَ بِسْمٍ نُورِكُمْ And don't forget that's according to your iman. But the hypocrite, he has no iman. So he's with the Muslims and the hypocrites are with the Muslims, but because they have no iman, they have no light. So Allah says, and on the day when you will see the hypocrite men and hypocrite women, they will say to the believers, wait for us, let us get a part of your light. They will be said, go to the back, go to the back. And look for your light over there. It's going to be said to them. So the hypocrites, they will come out of the group of the believers who are now here. And the hypocrites will go out and they will go to the back. And so now we have separation between the believers and the hypocrites. And Allah Jalla wa Ala, He says, فَضُرِبَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِسُورِ اللَّهُ بَابِ And then there will be put up a barrier between them. A wall will be put up between those hypocrites who are who are at the back and the believers who are at the front. Allah says, inside will be mercy. Inside that gate is mercy for the believers. And outside of it is torment. So now, the disbelievers, the hypocrites, they will be dragged and they will fall into the fire of hell. Ikhwani fillah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam will then come to the front of the sirat and the rest of the prophets will come to the front of the sirat and they will say, Allahumma sallim sallim, oh Allah, make it safe, oh Allah, make it safe. And then the people, they will pass over this bridge. Some will pass like lightning. Some will pass like a fast wind. Some will pass like a man on a fast horse. Some will pass running. Some will pass walking. Others, they will crawl. Some will fall and they will hold on and they will manage to come back up and they will go slowly, slowly across. And others, my brothers, who are believers, remember, because there's only believers left. Others who are believers, they will be taken and they will be thrown into the fire of hell. If Allah deals with them out of his justice and not out of his mercy, meaning Allah chooses to hold them to account for their sins, then they will fall into the fire of hell. And then the people, they will pass over a bridge known as, so they've passed over the Sirat, and then there's a platform known as Al-Qantara, and the Qantara, this is a place where those believers who are now left and they've saved and they're like, phew, alhamdulillah, we've, 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 we've managed it, we've done well. Then any minor disagreements that they had between themselves in the life of the world, 
they're going to sort it out. They're going to say, listen, look at what we've just endured. You know, it's really not worth it. Let's sort it out. It's squashed. We forgive each other for the sake of Allah. And then they will go on and they will wait at the doors of Al Jannah. And then those doors will not be opened for anyone other than Al Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is, my brothers, a whistle stop tour, as they say, a whistle stop tour through the Day of Judgment. And I want to end with one hadith. Because we're all going to stand on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and there's no doubt concerning that. And this is a day, la rayba fi. there's no doubt. And this is a day which is truth. The way we are here now, that day is more truthful than this day. Because this world is full of temptations and full of deceptions. That day, that world is not full of deceptions. It's full of truth. And so my brothers... The first deed for which the person he will be held to account is the salah. Maybe there's somebody here who doesn't pray. If you've listened through all of this and then you don't pray your five daily prayers, you've got to ask yourself, what am I preparing for that day? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said for the, the first of the actions for which the slave will be brought to account is the prayer. If it is good, then he has succeeded. And in some narrations, Allah will look at the rest of his actions. And if it is bad, then he has failed and he has lost. So I ask you, my brothers and sisters, to judge yourselves. Because nobody here is going to judge you. Allah will judge us all. But that should terrify us, by the way. Allah will judge us all. That what is failure and what is success on the day of judgment? Allah says, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ Whoever, his face is saved from the fire and he enters into the Jannah, Allah says, he's been successful. Success means getting into Jannah and failing. He said, whoever his salah is not complete, he has failed and he has lost. He has failed and he has lost. What is failure and what is loss? It's entering into the fire of hell. And so, my brothers, like I said, and sisters, the reason why we talk about the Day of Judgment is because we want to fix today. We want to prepare today. And the things that we're doing today, this is, you know, like what we're doing now, is we are building, 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 building. And then we're going to see the results of our actions. We're taking an examination today. We're going to find out the results tomorrow when we stand in front of Allah, Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So we have, and it's an open book exam, Alhamdulillah. It's an open book exam. We know the questions. We know what, what's going uh, right and what's going wrong. We know what to do and what we shouldn't be doing. And so if we choose now to just neglect it, then on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, we have no excuse in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so my brothers, I ask Allah jalla wa ala that he makes us from the people of Jannah. And I ask Allah that he gives us an easy reckoning on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. I ask Allah that Yawm Al-Qiyamah that he doesn't expose us for our sins. And that he covers us just like he covers us in this world. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he resurrects us with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those righteous believers. And I ask Allah that when the scales are set up, that he makes our good deeds heavy and that he makes our evil deeds light. And I ask Allah that he grants us al-firdaws al-a'la without any accountability. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides us to his pleasure جزاكم الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك وجزاكم الله خيرا فالسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته